Blau und weiß sein, lieben Lang. Willkommen zum einzigen Schalke Podcast auf Englisch. Champions of the Second Division. Welcome to episode 159 of Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me on this Champions Monday podcast, 
Jack Megan, how we doing? Doing excellently. Last week, maybe, you know, the most important victory Monday or whatever, you know, uh, but this time around, um, certainly the most jubilant one. Um, yeah. I'm doing fantastic. That was a great little way to, you know, to close out the season against yeah. our, our friends in, in Nuremberg. Uh, you they know, played lot, our a little music bit to talk about. What did you say? They played our music after we won the title. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, stuff to talk about with Tarada and everything, and it's just honestly great to see, uh, you know, how happy the players were and how much it meant to them and everything as well, uh, and the whole staff. Um, there's obviously been some dark days uh, in the club in the past couple of years, and uh, one hell of a roller coaster, but uh, this is a this is a great little stopping point onto the, uh, the next adventure. Yeah, the next adventure is the Bundesliga, and then, you know, many wonder who's going to join us. We know Werder Bremen is going to join us uh, after the the way the game's panned out, all we had to do was get a draw or win. We obviously won. Uh, Toroda getting his 30th goal. How about that, right? Breaking the club record for most goals in a single season. And then um, Hamburg pulling it out, and they get to play Hertha Berlin in the playoff game. So uh, we'll see who gets out of there. But imagine those three teams coming up from the Zweite Liga. Uh, exactly. Of, like, that would be pretty amazing for the league in general. But uh, we're back. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's – God, I love Rovin Schroeder. I, you know, he was. I, I don't know if you watched the celebration today. I don't know anybody who's listening and watches the celebration, but uh, he was he was you know partying mode and stuff. And God, everybody loves him, and he knows he's so professional, right? He went on ZDF or one one of the news stations last night, uh, Sport Ions maybe, and um, they were trying to like find out like anything from who's next coach is going to be. Are we signing Ortega from Armenia Bielefeld? And he's like, he's like a rock dude. He's like, we're, we'll see what happens here, man. We're not worried about that, you know. And just focusing on celebration tomorrow, da, 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 and couldn't get anything out of him. Um, but Ortega was there, the goalkeeper for Bielefeld, and they asked him. He wasn't as point blank as as uh, Roven Schroeder. He was like, "Oh, you know, Gelsenkirchen's a nice city. You know, it's I heard it's a nice club." Uh, so he's like, "Oh, okay, okay, maybe you're coming to Schalke, huh?" So anyway, it, it, man, if he said if he was talking up Gelsenkirchen specifically, then he probably is coming to Schalke. I don't yeah, know. I don't exactly. know people are just casually like you know giving ups to. Uh, <laughs> I go there to the beach you know, on the holidays. The industrial northwest of Germany, <laughs> generally. Um, but uh, yeah, and hey, listen, he did, he delivered a title winning squad, not just a you know a promotion squad, but a title winning squad. Obviously, you know some close results in this weird streak that we had at the end. A couple of those go a different way. You know, maybe we were talking about something else, but um, you know. A, a great job, I think, um, if we had already been in the second division for some period of time and even better um, in the context of the financial situation and, you know, the, the huge yeah. rebuild that we had to do. Um, yeah, really a top class job. Um, it's it's it feels great to have some people in the right positions, it seems like there's Finally. been such like institutional failure. Yeah. Um, and to get a, you know, somebody in that, that really, you know, now he has his bigger job coming up, obviously this next step is going to be yeah. difficult and it's not like going to be like now that we're in the, uh, in the first division again, suddenly we're going to be like a top six team. Like this could be years before we get back to that level. Um, for sure. I mean, I'm sure like our, our primary goal next season is going to be just to stay in the league. Um, so, you know, short will have more to do, but in the meantime, he deserves all those celebrations. His job's gotten easier because he doesn't have to plan for two different eventualities now. Because yeah. um, for a while there, he didn't know if he was going up or staying down. So yeah. it's a huge weight off his, you know, his shoulders. Um, yeah. So he deserves to be made of those celebrations. And I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm feeling good with him at the helm. Yeah. 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 And he was leading the, uh, during the celebrations today, he was leading the, uh, Svaita Liga, Nima, you know, that, that chant today. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, he's been a blessing this guy. Obviously are signing the season. Uh, Reggie makes note of, you know, Salazar, what a goal he scored, right? Three games in a row we've had, Epic endings to the games, right? Sennhausen, Toroda scores at the death. Uh, Salazar with a freaking rocket against St. Pauli to get the win there. And then in the first goal of the game here from his own just past midfield, I mean, a rocket too. It wasn't just like he lofted it. He rocketed it past the goalkeeper. What a goal, man. Goal of the year right there. He's been on fire. Toroda's got 30 goals this season. It's just been a, a crazy year. Um, I don't know, man. That, that goal. How about that goal, man? 
I mean, Salazar called the best score that he's the best goal that he scored in his career. Um, so that's an interesting insight to see how like some soccer players judge them, right? Like some might say, like, "Hey, I had this like technical piece of footwork and then had a clean yeah. finish, and that's the best you know goal or whatever." But uh, Salazar, I mean, I can't blame him for picking one from his own half. Uh, pretty ridiculous. Yeah. He didn't even have a whole lot of time to size that up and react no, to it. No, because um, it was kind of a loose ball situation. He just kind of went for it, and um, yeah, the keeper was backtracking, and it it was one of those ones that wasn't too far underneath the bar when it no. cleared. So like, no the kind of, I mean, I don't know how much precision goes into that when you're just kind of whacking it, but some of these really do seem to be like, you know, weighted like pretty perfectly. So it's, it's going over the keeper and under the bar and not, you know, going flying over into the stands or anything. So yeah, yeah pretty spectacular. That's uh that's one way to kind of get things kickstarted in terms of the championship celebration. Yeah, oh my gosh. Like oh my gosh. Med Hunter. We see you, man. Shout out. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Um, yeah. That's a fantastic way to get the celebrations going. Obviously, um, some of the pictures that came from uh from the game you saw some of the video we just showed you know um Buskin's crying in the locker room so happy the team just so jubilant um guys had a lot of fun i forget who mentioned it today i saw comments and it might have been on the live stream i saw the comment which was by, by the way twenty two thousand people at the celebration today another 33 36 000 online watching unbelievable the turnout for the championship today but somebody said made the comment about like in such a short amount of time, it was Fairman. In such a short amount of time, uh, Tirota has come in and really embraced the club and really become one of the one of the you know miners. Uh, Roland Schroeder too, I think. So uh, both those guys kind of stepped in and really became uh, at the forefront of the team on their push to promotion and the championship in the second division. So uh, yeah, uh, Tirota done a lot for us and a lot, all the signings. Honestly, you mentioned it yeah. one or two podcasts ago. Pretty much everybody had a game that they excelled in. I then with that karate kick goal. Vinheim that one performance and had two goals and assists or whatever it was and yeah everyone stepped up. That's Randall had a couple had a couple games where yes. he had good performances. I mean like yeah people people would would uh, would find a way to get it done when called upon. Um, you know especially in those positions where there was a lot of rotation because of injury or whatever. So um, but yeah Tarada just for a second. I mean uh, the quotes about him from some of the other players and stuff like it's not obviously he had personal goals in terms of his goal scoring yeah. and stuff that's kind of yeah. spurring him on but a lot of the quotes just saying like how much he bought in to the club and really cared about it and like you know it has, has been sort of like a model you know member of the team or whatever just a really good dude um and so you just yeah you love to hear that and for him to get 30th you know and break that record and have a nice round number like that yeah um especially you know at the moment he did right after we had conceded uh you know to, to secure the title was pretty special oh. um, his celebration <laughs> that's how he runs that's how he runs he did it at Sandhausen. he did it, it here. so great yeah dude, oh, it's so funny it. so funny um him, yeah, him taking off to the corner was yeah it was comedy <laughs> its own but yeah really happy for him i mean when we talked about him you know being a sure thing or as close a thing as there is um you know i was thinking like he's gonna get 15 goals this season yeah like maybe 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 he'll get like 20 if, if like you know things are going well but like we didn't know what like the team was going to look like and the kind of chances we'd be creating that kind of stuff and i'm like i think he'll probably be able to get 15 and the fact that he doubled that and put up you know a 30 burger at the age that he is um is is pretty special and uh you know i hope he can have a decent season in the bundesliga next year i really do who knows how it's going to translate and i understand that like the second division is it's a different thing and so the defense, the defenders are a lot better. It's you know, but I really hope that he has a good run because it'd be it'd be fun to see. So I know the discussion's been many times, and people have mentioned this to Flick, whether it's you know jokingly or not. That um, and I'm talking about Hansi Flick, not Florian. That Tarota, he's such a good goal scorer. Germany has nobody else. Why not bring him up? And it's hard to say, yeah, bring him up because he's in the second division, but now he's in the Bundesliga. If he can produce early on in the season. At the clip he was doing at sec in second division, you know he has yet to do it yet in the Bundesliga. I would not, I would, I would say it would be a long shot for him to make the the, the squad. Obviously, they're gonna probably pick the squad before then, but you know maybe Flick has him as a substitute just in case to see how the season starts. And if he continues being hot, maybe they bring him on just to have him. Why not? A veteran leadership. I, I think it would be really difficult to include somebody in the squad who hasn't been a part of the team at any of the international windows sure. in the cycle leading up to it. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that kind of thing never happens, but that is a starter. Um, but like on the yeah, I think guy. he would, I think he would have to play a couple of friendlies at a minimum, yeah. you know, between now and then. And yeah, I don't, obviously I'm not, I'm not expecting that to happen no, or anything, no. but Hey, wouldn't it be a terrible option as a super sub, uh, you know, yeah. late in the game breaks me like that. I know, but anyway, well, keep him healthy um, with Shaka. I'll, I'll find with that too. <laughs> Fine with that as well, for sure. Yeah, listen, it's just it's he was he was 
everything that was advertised and more than that. Um, we needed it this season. Lord knows we needed it. And it was, uh, as we've said numerous times throughout the year, so refreshing to have a guy up front that you could count upon to finish chances when they came to him. Um, he was actually like a little bit wasteful in this game, you could argue, and the previous one, like kind of uncharacteristically, had a couple of chances he could have yeah. done better with. But generally speaking, yeah, he, he's not greedy despite how many goals he scores. He sets up his teammates. He's willing to pass the ball for a better look. Um, yeah, he really has been a, a great addition to the team. And I've actually, my respect for him has grown a lot this year being able to watch him so consistently and see how yeah. much more there is to his game than I had kind of he's always the myth extent. right and now we get to actually watch him like, yeah okay, okay. at that point yeah yeah it's interesting now so he not necessarily but in, in our eyes I guess but he'll be the face of the strikers in the Bundesliga because Lewandowski is probably gone Halan's gone I mean you got Patrick Schick and a couple other a few other guys several other guys every team's got a, a, some good strikers but you know you never know you never know uh I don't. I mean, I, I don't know if he's gonna be the face, but that'd be pretty. <laughs> but like, but like, wouldn't it be fun though? Wouldn't it be fun if he actually did get off, regardless of what happens over the course of an entire campaign? Wouldn't it be fun if he got off to a hot start? Yes. And, and did something crazy and scored, you know, scored like six or and seven it, goals in the first like four matches. Yeah. And then like everyone has to talk about him. Um. And then you know our friends over at the uh you know second division podcast, uh, <laughs> Matthew and Aver, like not Tirada again. Obviously, <laughs> like you know. They won't have to talk about him because they're they're covering the second division. Yeah. But, you know, it's gonna go to another league and it's all you know hogging all the uh, all the spotlight and everything. I think that'd be funny, but yeah, yeah. And next next season will be interesting. I mean, obviously the pieces around him, right? What's important for Toroto is service, right? And we locked. Well, first before I get to the left back, we're locking up some of these other pieces. Um, and Schroeder was quoted as saying, you know, my neck. One of my next focuses now, or maybe it wasn't him, but somebody else threw him said that. Um, our main focus are Itakura and Salazar, who are both Lonis that we're trying to, you know, secure long term. Um, so we'll see how that, those shape out. Obviously, we need a manager. I imagine the manager is going to make sure that, or Schroeder is going to make sure that this manager uses Toroda and Bulter as a main focus. Most most of the main pieces here not changed too much. Uh, we'll see who the manager is going to be. It's a lot of speculation, whether it's from Raúl to uh, Funke to whoever. It's a bunch of guys are naming out there. But the left back I want to bring up because. I don't know if you saw this, Jack, but it was a learning lesson for me. This whole time, I've been pronouncing his name Thomas Oweyan, and it's Oweyan, Oweyan. So the chant was today, he had the, when he had the trophy, he said, Oweyan, Oweyan. So anyway, I just thought I'd teach you that. We're going to have to ask Derek Ray, I think, for the uh, for the official, official pronunciation. If anyone would know, it would definitely be him. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, yeah, apologies to uh, Thomas Oweyan. We'll do the summertime. We'll do the summertime. Been, uh... We'll have some time butchering it all, all year uh yeah but good to have him locked up for the next campaign yeah. peeringer as well i forget if we talked about either of those yeah yeah on the previous podcast uh you know securing because he was on loan from who's a freiburg right yes i believe so Wait, who's this from, peeringer was he from uh, Freiburg? Was... i just don't remember who it was anyway peeringer yeah. permanently now as well and so yeah itakura you mentioned that's one of the focuses as it should be i think um, I would love to see what Itakura can do in the Bundesliga. Yeah, um, he certainly looked the part in the second division uh, this season. Um, I think you mentioned that, like, you saw somewhere that like Malik Chow was in the team of the year. Um, yep. And there's a lot of people in the comments underneath that where I was seeing online that are like, Where's "Why not Itakura about? instead of Malik Chow?" You know, yeah. and they're, you know, yeah. and I, could, like, I could see there being a fair argument for that. So yeah, I, I would love it if we could lock him up permanently as long as the deal makes sense, you know, financially. Um, and retain his services. The interesting part before I get to the question, Reggie, um, I heard rumors that, you know, if anyone they're going to let go and try to get some money for, it'll be Malik Tiao. He's young. He's fairly decent. There's rumors about him possibly leaving in the, in the winter. I don't want to see it, but I mean, that's, they're going to have to get a defender because, I mean, who knows how Sane feels now. I mean, maybe he steps up coming to the Bundesliga. You need that experience, but. Obviously, Tiao and Itakura had the majority of the starts in the defensive end uh, this year. And I I like Itakura in the midfield because he has the uh, offensive ability to contribute to the match. The passing is ridiculous. He can still tackle, which is a big for a defensive midfielder or a, a center back. But um, you still need depth no matter what. If you do get rid of Tiao, you need to bring in somebody else. I know they're bringing in a backup for Uyan in uh, one of the Cisse's, one of the Cisse boys. Um, so there's some depth coming in, but yeah, center back is going to be interesting to see what happens with that, Jack. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, maybe, I mean, tell me if you're wrong in chat, feel free to weigh in. Um, I, 
I don't know how good I would feel if if it was like, yeah, we have Kaminsky, Itakura, and and Sane because I don't know if you can rely on Sane, yeah, um, from a, from a durability standpoint, if nothing else, to say Kaminsky. nothing else to play on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't. Kaminsky was 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 good for the second division. I'm slightly more concerned about Kaminsky going forward than I am about like Malik Chow or Koei Takura, for example. Um, but yeah, Sane, I don't know. I think I feel like he might move on. If he doesn't, I still think you can't necessarily rely on him to be available. So uh, yeah, losing Malik Chow would be would be big. Hopefully, we'd be able to splash some cash for him. Um, it hasn't really gone our way recently, but you know who knows. This is potentially an opportunity to put him in the shop window. I mean, as much as the second division can, you know, you get promoted, you get the title that at least gives you a little bit of extra. Oh wait, we have Ozan Kabak come back. We're good. There you go. <laughs> so the question in the chat says, uh, besides Tarota, in your opinion, guys, who is Schalke's best player? That's tough. It's tough. I mean, if you're looking at a, a year perspective, Thomas Oyan has been the most consistent, most electrifying guy. You know, at, at times, Salazar's, Salazar down the stretch was amazing. Chirlinov has been great. Bulter has been fantastic. Um, Itakura, Tiao. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys you could name. Yeah, I think I think first half of the season, I would have said Ovian. Um, I think second half of the season, you may have to say Salazar, especially just for how many big moments he had. Yeah. Um, uh, he didn't start at the beginning, I think, right? He, he started coming off the bench at the beginning part of the second half and then eventually worked his way in. Yeah. Like, so that's the thing is like, I think like, you know, we had better performances and was also a little bit more available in the first half of the season and a little bit less. So, you know, second half with China Noglo and everything. Um, but yeah, or you could, you know, like I said, you could say one of the center backs, you could say Malik Shaw, you could say it occur and you'd probably be right about those um, as well. And I think the thing that's so much f- fun about the Schalke team and kind of underscores why it's been so enjoyable to watch this campaign um, is the number of guys that in your head you kind of want to give credit to because there's so many guys that that did play important roles. Like you said, Cherlinoff, for example, um, huge at certain moments down the stretch. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, Bolter played a big role. Drexler, you know, put in yeah. big performances at the time. There's so many guys that 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 you know had had moments and and were important contributors. And yeah. um, yeah, Kaminsky pretty solid get. all year. For right. sure, hey, in Kaminsky, one for the road in terms of his lofted long balls. There was a there was a beautiful one in this match against Nurburg. I think maybe in the second half where Bolter is making kind of a diagonal run, and Kaminsky plays it like well before Bolter breaks yeah. the back line. And I yeah. mean, yeah, Bolter couldn't couldn't do anything with it ultimately, but he plays it to him in the box from deep. And I was like, that's a hell of a ball. So, yeah, Kaminsky had his moments as well. Um, it was a fun squad. It was a really fun squad. Take this break, uh, uh, drink break. What are we drinking tonight, Jack? I'm drinking Gentleman Jack. Well, I, re- I appreciate that. Thank you, you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I had I had to go out and get some some Veltons just for the occasion. Oh, so lovely, I man. mean, uh, I, you know, I couldn't I couldn't watch any of these celebrations obviously today. Um, you know, with work and everything, so I got the scarf on now. We got the Veltons cracked. This is kind of our uh, our poor, very poor replacement for that. You didn't have Corona like me. You couldn't stay home. Come on now. No. Yeah. Fortunately not. Fortunately yeah. not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what a game. Um, I, I do want to talk about the lineup in this game yes. because it changed and we kind of expected the one change. Uh, and I was kind of hoping this guy would lift the trophy first as opposed to lots of, but I understand why lots of he's a team captain. Uh, but the lineups in this one, Fairman back between the sticks for his possibly last game. Um, you know, what a way to be in the, between the pipes for the clinching game already of the official champions game. So that, that was great to see. Back four of Oyan, Uyan, excuse me, Kaminsky, Tiao, and Aiden back in the lineup. Flick, Itakura with Chirlinov, Salatar in front of them, and then Bulter and Toroto up top. Um, where do you want to start with this? I think where you did, which is which is Ralph Fairman. Um, I thought that was a great move um, uh, for them to do that and give him the opportunity. Uh, obviously, you know, from an analytics standpoint or whatever. Uh, the most important game was to seal promotion. That was obviously the much more crucial yes. thing than sealing the title. So, you know, Frazzle was still in goal for that one. Um, but the fact that they gave it to Fairman in a game that wasn't a meaningful game, ultimately, because we had a title on the line, um, I thought was great. He got an opportunity to kind of go out on top and, and you know, everything he's been with at the club. Once again, he stayed with the club when they went down. Um, obviously a big salary, too. But, like, you know, he cut his yeah. salary, stayed with the club. Like, I mean... He's he's been through quite a lot in his Schalke career, and I thought it was very classy to to afford him that opportunity to be kind of in the moment. And you know what? Decent game from him. Yeah, had a couple of big saves in the second yeah. half, in particular. Um, so yeah. yeah, good for him. 
two saves in like within a matter of like seconds, I think. So yeah, he's had a really good, he had a pretty decent game and what a way to win the championship there with him. And, you know, who knows if he stays along or at least stays along with the, with the club, much like Gerald Asamoah. Um, but I was just so happy all the way around. There's celebrations all around. I mean, the, the team was good. I got to see Iden back in the lineup. We, we thought maybe he would see him over Vinheim because Vinheim was, he's been, he started out his debut with us very well, but then he got injured, came back. He wasn't the same per- player, it seemed like, uh, on the bounce back. But, um, yeah, I then good shift from them. You know, that obviously that wonder goal by Salazar to start things off. And we knew that all we need is a draw. But, you, you know, Nuremberg get that goal in the 83rd minute or whatever. We're like, ah, let's, get a, let's win this with a win, right? And then Torta comes back and gets that goal. Who else again? Blendy Idrizi, who seems to be assisting Taroda at the end of the season here every time he comes on. Um, good guy to look for, I guess, right? But uh, yeah, two-one victory. Get the vi- get the win on the road or slash road home, whatever you want to call it. Nuremberg, our friends there, and they were did the classy thing um, by playing our music after we won, and the crowd was amazing. Which is which is really neat. Was that friend of the show, Renee? During the celebrations, he was leading some of the chants. He had he had video of himself of like leading the crowd and then the team in chants, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was dope. Uh, so shout out to Renee for that and all the other people who were out there. I know Kessie from Coney's Blog TV was there and Shaka Corner, a bunch of other people were out there. So um, yeah, my buddy Alex. Uh, yes, man, managed managed to get tickets, so he was in attendance. He was down yeah. on the field with everybody. He and, tagged uh, us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just pretty funny. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so he had a, he had a he had a good time, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it seemed like it was a great atmosphere. Obviously, it was it was nice that you know we were um, among friendly, you know, uh, opposition, you could say, um, right. which I think helped make the experience probably even that much better because they were maybe allowed to like kind of linger a little bit longer and get away with some stuff because you know, whatever. But um, th- there's the trophy for Torada, by the way. And he had a co- trying to take a bite yeah. out of uh, Torada. Yeah, going full Suarez there. Uh, Tarada, um, I think I saw a quote from her. So we were saying that like before he didn't have like an actual like top scorer trophy, and his wife was making them for him. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this that. looks like he plays for plays for Arsenal or something. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have brought that up. It's a bad day to bring up Arsenal. Uh, they lost to Newcastle. Really. Anyway, um, yeah, I. How can I mean? It, I've just been smiling all weekend, and how can you not when you look at you know these photos? And there's so many likable players oh my gosh, on this yeah. team. And oh, uh, there's a sound that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> but yeah, no, so many likable players. I mean, Bolter, you know, love his celebrations. His uh, his uh, face all the There's Robert Schroeder. I mean, there's Robert Schroeder leading the uh, chant. I saw that live. So yeah, no, it was good times all around. Uh, I didn't realize this Salazar, right? He, every time he does interviews, he does them in Spanish. And I've I've heard him do German. I've heard him do English. Uh, but yeah, I guess he's most comfortable in Spanish. It makes sense. And so I saw most of his interviews doing it in Spanish there. So um, yeah, just like you said, fun all the way around. We all had just a smile on our face. Not only did we get promoted, which we were happy, uh, thrilled about, obviously with the storming of the pitch um, at Velta's last week, but winning the title too, right? I forget who said it. I don't know if it was Buskins or Shorter. Or somebody said, you know, let's just do this right way. End it with a championship and move yeah. on up. And that's the way we did it. Um, so good for them. Uh, lots you have to go stuff. for it. If it's there to take it. Yeah. We, we talked last week, maybe they'll play a bunch of youth kids and get a look at them, but it's yep. like, when that's on the line, you have to go for it. They did. Um, and they got it done. And uh, you know, I'm sure there'll some, be some Dortmund fans out there. That'll be making fun of us for celebrating a, a second division title, but you know, um, we have a title to celebrate. And we'll, we'll take it when we can get it. So someone tweeted um, out that uh, in the Ruhr Valley, Shaka has a title this year. Bochum has a title. Uh, somebody else has a title. I was probably Tom. Not. I think it was. Tom, yeah, 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 it was yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. And then uh, friends at the Yellow Wall podcast, they were like, "Hey, we won the we won the U 17s <laughs> I was like, "Okay, fair enough." <laughs> uh, be back to ha- good to have the Derby, uh, River Derby, back again next year. So uh, I'm sure they missed us. Yeah, the, the Dortmund fans game. that are like, like, oh, I was so glad the, the Derby was over. Like, bullshit. They're you? getting beaten by get Bayern. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. I don't know. I, 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 that's why I was saying like back in the day, and maybe I'll take shit for this, but like when Dortmund had that really bad start with Klopp for a while, you know, before he left and everything, yeah. I was like, I really hope Dortmund don't go down. Yeah. I don't think that's good for the Bundesliga, and I'd yeah. obviously prefer to have the Derby. Like, yeah, I want to beat them, but like I don't want them to like collapse as a team. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They've obviously had a, like, you know, a sketchy history at times as well. So, um, yeah, the people that were rooting for our downfall, uh, reports of Schalke's demise may have been premature uh here we are 
back to the top division. Like I said, we're not going to necessarily... we just completely dissolve, you know, I mean, there was that possibility, but I don't know. I don't know how far away we were at times, but um, yeah, I mean, listen, like it's, it's not going to be a jump probably right back into the top six or anything. This could be a very different season next year in terms of uh, like we're you know, yeah. winning a lot of games this year and it's, it's fun to watch. And the next couple of seasons might be very different from that and kind of fighting for survival, but um. We're back where we belong, at least, and I think we have a lot of good people in place to hopefully continue that trajectory um, and that success. And we have some teams we can look at that have success, right? Union Berlin, they came up, and now they're fighting for European spots. Cologne, right? Cologne, they came up last year. Now they're fighting for a European spot. They might be uh, – I don't even know if they'll get Champions League not, or not, but whatever. And Freiburg, you know, they've been around for a long time. They might get Champions League too, but um, yeah, it's just uh, – there's a possibility there, but the big the big thing is going to be the coach. I think you bring in a coach sure. that doesn't fit, like a Brighton writer or whatever we had in the past, or Vine Zero. It just, just the chemistry is so good right now, and you can disrupt that. And so I'm mad, I I am confident that Schroeder's you know in the interview process saying that look, we want to know what your tactics are and stuff like that. But look, this is the core. We have a system here. You got to kind of. Stay along the lines. They don't necessarily have to keep the same thing, but no, don't change too much because obviously the chemistry is fantastic. You need you got Toroto who's scoring like a, like crazy. Bolter's doing well. You know, um, we don't we're have much money to spend. Another big thing about the victory with the, the title is we got a million dollars because a million euros because of it. If we hadn't won the championship, we wouldn't have got that, and so that helps a little bit. You know, for next year with signing some of these players or re-signing some of these players. But yeah, it's. Um, the coaching is going to be interesting, and Roman Schroeder has been quiet about that. And we'll get into more in our last podcast, but yeah, that that's gonna the, the season's going to hinge on that. What the coaches and what Schroeder can do again? Can he work some more magic? That's going to be the question. Yeah. Uh, he did it in the Svita Liga, can he do it in the Bundesliga. That's that's going to be if he does that. I mean, he's already a Schalke legend. Uh, obviously, Buskins is as well. But um, if he can really pull some more magic out, I mean, he'll be legendary. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he feels pressure though to deliver, you know, a, of course. a good manager and a manager that's going to be a fit. Because yeah, I mean, like, listen, if you have the wrong guy, um, you know, leading you, it doesn't matter what squad you've built; it's not going to work out. Um, and uh, to some extent, we kind of saw that late in this season. Uh, you know, I don't want to overstate that, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, yeah. the squad was there and we had to make a change. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's taking his time. It sounds like they have a preferred candidate. And it sounds like it may even be further along than they're letting on. They just are not allowed to officially announce it. So yeah. maybe somebody needs to be let out of a contract. Or something else needs to happen. Yeah, because he uh, made that comment about like we're not in a position to make any comments about it right now, which that leads me to believe that he might be in contract right now and it's expiring. There's a couple of people that come in mind, but I you know I don't want to bring it up in this podcast. But um, you imagine that as good a job he's done in this coming in this whole season that he's already got somebody in mind there's already been discussions and just waiting for this final you know final tweaks to try to you know make sure we get the right deal or, or the the final agreements because if he hasn't done anything yet that's like what are you doing you know every other team in the bundesliga is looking for a manager probably now right and so um because i heard um a couple the gladbach managers leaving isn't he or a couple couple big managers are leaving i forget who um, I saw but, I saw some tweet. I don't know if this was a joke or not, if or whatever. But I saw somebody saying that was like Brighton writer was getting linked to the uh, Gladbach okay. job, which is hilarious. Oh, but, oh Gladbach, yeah, that'd um, be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was not us. Oh yeah, not us. Not us. No, yeah, but. <laughs> uh, but yeah, celebrations, man. Uh, it's crazy, crazy weekend. I feel for Darmstadt because they did what they had to do. They won three nothing, and at one point Hamburg were losing one nothing, and it looks like Darmstadt's going to the. Um, Oh, well, uh, Hamburg needed a win, and they were down one nothing. So it looked like Darmstadt. They were cruise control. They're going to come in relegation, and then uh, Gladbach, or excuse me, Hamburg st uh, stormed back and won the game. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, if they can get promoted too. I mean, as you mentioned yeah. at the top of the podcast, like Schalke, Bremen, Hamburg all getting promoted would be incredible uh, in leader. terms of you know the, the how big those clubs are, how um, you know traditional, whatever you want to say. Um, that'd be that'd be pretty great uh no disrespect to Herod to berlin but also kind of disrespect to Herod to berlin so um not really kind of deserve to be um, it kind of deserved to be relegated for all the money they spent and didn't do anything i, with it, I right. feel i feel bad for for some of their supporters obviously it's just been pretty bad mismanagement and like you know splashing cash without necessarily how about clear transfer Suat policy Serter? And, what how about Suat Serter? Possibly what's his relegated? contract situation right now 
I don't know. Didn't he? I how long? He, how long did he sign for for them? I was just wondering. But no, that's a good um, question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be unfortunate if he, you know, jumps ship and then goes down right as Shaka gets promoted. That'd be oh pretty terrible. God. Yeah, another guy that, you know, I kind of feel for too because he, his injuries and stuff just felt like he could never really get as much momentum as he needed. But anyway. Yeah. Timo Becker, real quick. Yes. He was at yeah. the celebration today. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, he was great. And he, he had, said a nice goodbye post to, uh, you know, Hansa Rostock supporters on Instagram and everything. Um, yeah, you know, I hope he's given another opportunity to potentially be part of the squad. It definitely seems like it means a lot to him. And um, I feel like maybe public opinion is, sh- is shifting in our direction if it wasn't always, which is kind of like we're surprised that Karantzis, he wasn't in his plans necessarily. And it seemed kind yeah. of strange. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the public perception on us and Germany is changing on us. So that's good. That's always good, right? <laughs> but um, did you see, you mentioned Timo Becker. Um, Hansa Rostock, did you see the comment? I guess it was the manager who, who commented on Timo Becker, and he asked him about him being at the celebration at uh, Nuremberg. And he's like, you know what? He's like, he's a Shaka player. Like, he didn't do anything to our game. He, he played our when he played with us. He played you know full heart and everything like that. That's his team, his parent club. Why not be there? He grew up in the area. He you know he deserves to be there. So I, I think that was nice about the Rostock manager to say that. Yeah, I did. I did as well. Um, you know, if that was Roy Keane or somebody. You know, they might be like <laughs> having a much harder <laughs> line about like, you know, like, no, you're under contract with this club for, you know, two more weeks and like, you're you know, fired. yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, that was nice. That they obviously let him go and do that. And um, awesome. He was kind of able to be a part of it. So, uh, you know, you, he was his image when Schalke got relegated, I think is one of the most kind of pointed images and ones that kind of sticks yeah. with fans a lot. Him on the bench. That and Asamoa crying. I think yeah. those are the two images there for sure. I, uh, Joseph, I think we will get bigger sponsors. It just, it, it has to, we have to be bigger sponsors now. Um, no disrespect to Viva West, but you know, you have maybe a bigger name will come up and say, Hey, we'll give you some money. And that would help too, in terms of trying to buy some players. Uh, we'll be next year will be very interesting. You know, like I said, we'll, we need, we need about a week detached from games to kind of get into nitty gritty of contracts and this and that. And, and, uh, so we'll do one more episode, maybe get a guest here too, uh, for our final episode. I'm going on vacation soon. So we got to do it before then. Um, I'll be recovered from my coronavirus. Hopefully by then I, I should be. Um, but yeah, I mean, before we wrap this up, chat, do you have anything you want to talk about? I mean, Jack, you got anything else uh, need to talk about or want to glow about, drink about? We'll talk about like, I think we'll do some semblance of like mini end of season awards or something on our final podcast, but just like any, any quick like highlights from the season, either like a goal that was scored or like a moment. I'd have to go back through some of it to remember everything, obviously too. Um, I just wondered, you know, if you had anything that was sticking out. You had some of those ones at the beginning with the uh, with the video put together, the compilation highlight video. That's yeah. some of those those better goals. But uh, um, I think uh, I think that Iden goal, the Karate Kid goal, yeah, is definitely one of the iconic images of the season. Yes. Um it's up there for me for sure. I uh, I mean, the Toronto goal at the end was against Sandhausen was huge. I mean, especially given the context. Salazar's goal against St. Pauli was huge. The game was such a big for us. And then, I mean, obviously the Iden goal, Kaminsky scoring against Dusseldorf in like stoppage time. I remember that. Um, there's a few goals out there that were just like, wow. Um, so yeah, we'll get we'll get into all of that in the next podcast. Um, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome, Joseph. Uh, if you haven't watched, if you didn't get a chance to watch the video at the beginning of the podcast, it is on our YouTube page. Just go on YouTube page, watch the season highlights. We did a nice little season highlights. Um montage of, of Schalke's season this year from last year to this year so go check it out it's probably four minutes long so um i don't want i want to spare people who already watch and don't do it again so go watch there <laughs> quick yes, question for, quick question for the chat if they feel like participating and richard and you and i can discuss it as well yeah we'll sit back favorite favorite non torada non itakura signing of the season because i feel like torada and itakura are probably going to be the two you know so repeat that again because I'm I'm drinking favorite a favorite signing of the year who wasn't Tarada or Itakura. Okay. Oh, that's a good question. Because I feel like those are the two that get probably the most responses and and probably arguably the most deserved. I mean, Oyan is in there as well. Maybe I limit Oyan as well. I'm I'm just kind of interested like of like maybe like the second tier guys, um, so to speak. Oyan, okay. obviously, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great shout. Um, while the guys are trying to type their answers in, Med Hunter to answer your question. Our next podcast will be soon. Uh, maybe next Saturday. We'll see. We'll look at our schedules, Jack and I, and when I have to leave for vacation and get it in before then. Uh, we'll probably try to spring in a um, 
I was thinking about this, Jack. Maybe we can spring it with some of our uh, old Bundesliga commentator colleagues that we haven't spoken to in a while, right? You know, Derek Ray we had on, Phil Bonney, friend of the show, James Thorogood. Just throwing it out there to the internet to see if they catch it or not. But uh, yeah, yeah, Salazar. People are saying Salazar. A couple people for Salazar. Three people for Salazar. Yeah, All right. How could you, yeah, how could you not? Um, yeah. Yeah, all great shouts. Uh, I feel like I feel like Chirlinov really won me over down the stretch. No Frazzle? I, definitely not <laughs> Frazzle. But you know what I mean? Like I, I was I was not Chirlinov, yes. on, I was not as sold on Chirlinov earlier in the season. I feel like down the stretch he really became one of my favorite players in terms of like what I thought he was giving, you know, like emotionally and stuff and what he would bring when he would get subbed on, if nothing else, you know. Yeah, yeah. But maybe not the striker position like you wanted all season, Richard, but you know. Yeah, well, I know. I mean, he was um he, he is part of the second best tandem at Schalke, right? It's first is obviously Tord and Bulter. Second is probably Piringer and Turlinoff, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what does it say? Are there any players from second division you would buy? Yes. And I, I may know, I've said it's like on three podcasts in a row because I'm in love with these two guys, both from Darmstadt. Tietz, fantastic striker, I think would be a good, good backup. And Manu, also from Darmstadt. I thought he's a fantastic right winger. Uh, who's a lot of uh, talent to him, crossing abilities, uh, very hard to um, stop when he has the ball. So those are two. Yeah, items he had there. that game recently. He he didn't have the end product necessarily, but he was causing problems pretty yes. consistently. He's yeah. one of those guys that whenever he gets the ball in the final third, you get nervous yes. instinctively because you feel like he could create something at any moment. Um, yeah, interesting shout. I'd have to think about that some more for maybe next podcast. And Kira is a good maybe. shout. Um, yeah, I that's like what I thought Singh. you were going to say, actually, Richard. Yeah, from Singh, yeah, Kira yeah. is an excellent shot. I would love Kira as well. Um, I think Singh is a good player from Regensburg, but he's unfortunately a Bayern player, so you, we couldn't get him unless they didn't want him. Um, but yeah, I love Kira. Kira is a great, great shot as well. And part sure. of this is going to be you would think informed by whoever the ultimately the the coach is, and so you would imagine that Schroeder would be moving to to lock that up before he does too much transfer business yes. because. Um, you know, we don't know what system we're going to be playing. We mentioned a couple wingers just now, for example, right. Or guys that ostensibly could play in that position. And, um, you know, for a lot of the season, we didn't play in a, in a shape nominally that really allowed for that kind of player. And even actually back into the previous couple of years in the Bundesliga as well. Yeah. Um, you know, guys like Robbie Matondo kind of struggled to fit in maybe because they're playing like in a dual striker system instead of like you know, out on the left wing. What? He'll be back. That's there you go. Um, I'm just saying, so yeah, who knows what shape we're going to be in that might change, you know, some of your picks or whatever, but I think some of the shouts you gave already are, you know, those are good shouts. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully we hear something we can at least talk about. I know I have, a, I know there's a couple a couple managers on the, um, that people are talking about right now. Uh, Raul being one of them, but uh, yeah, let's see if some rumors kind of circulate. We know Schroeder's not going to say anything, right? He's, he's keeping his mouth shut. He's very professional. That's what we love about him on top of being, you know, excellent at what he does, but yeah, let's see if some more names emerge uh, and find out what's going on here. And uh, yeah, I'm curious. So we'll do one more podcast, like we said, and get a little bit more to the weeds. But yeah, tonight, just a celebratory mood. Uh, I'm not even finished my drink. Have you finished yet? I got one on deck, too. So we have, believe me, I went out and got the uh, the whole, you know, the whole 12 of Revelms. You're going to be like Ralph Fairman and put the whole case on your on your shoulder there? <laughs> Maybe. I might, I'm actually, actually going to go light up a victory cigar after this. Uh, as well, and just kind of keep the uh, the sellies rolling. Like I said, I, I couldn't watching the stream today during work, so uh, the you know this is the after party on a Monday night of all things. But yeah, 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 yeah. it is the after party. The party main party was in Gelsenkirchen today. Obviously, uh, for those who got to go, we're jealous of you. And if you got to watch along on the live stream like I did, hey, cheers to that. But uh, last victory Monday of the year, hell of a year, team. I mean, we all deserve this, right? The last three years, four years plus, whatever it was, it's been hard, you know, so uh, we, as fans, deserve this, so. We absolutely, we, <laughs> if I do say so myself, we absolutely <laughs> do, no, but like, but it's also been, it's also, I don't want to do this anytime soon again, I don't want to get relegated, or be, no, hopefully we're, no. we're, you know, mid-table next season somehow, and we don't have to worry about At this, worst, I don't yeah. want to go through this again, it's been enough um, for, uh, for one lifetime, but like, <laughs> In now that we've now that we have promotion locked up, I actually really do appreciate kind of the whole journey. Um, it really gets you in touch with like what's beautiful about the beautiful game and about German football in particular and yeah. some of like you know the eccentricities and the way that it's that's set up. Um, and you know, to to be playing Champions League games against Man City and then to go on this downward downward spiral, you know, for the unthinkable to happen and actually get relegated, move half the squad out. You know, um, 
rebuild in the midst of like financial chaos and a global pandemic, uh, fight through you know a packed season with a lot of good teams in the league that was going to be difficult, yeah. um, and somehow emerge out on top at the end of it all with the league's top scorer and a kind of like you know a, a well liked borderline club legend like certainly a club legend now probably Buyo, uh, if he wasn't already yeah, you know like yeah, at yeah, the helm, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. It's just an incredible kind of like full circle uh, ride, and there's more. There's more to the journey, like we said, next season. But yeah, it, I just I really appreciate the whole thing, and it's been uh, it's been awesome. I love the sport. I love the sport too. I I, I agree with that sentiment 100. percent And I also, on top of that, I think I found a new a newfound appreciation for the fight the Liga because I knew how good the league was and didn't get appreciated until now. We had to be part of it, unfortunately, and it's such a fantastic league. I mean, it's it every week something crazy, and then. If nothing else, these last three weeks with all the results going one one after another, I mean, it's it's an amazing league, and I hope to never come back into it again. But I will de- definitely keep close tabs on it just to see what's going on. It's it's in a fun fun league to watch. That's and, a, no, and that's a, that's a great shout for you too, because I would I would follow the results to some extent, but I wouldn't yeah. watch a lot of actual right. matches until towards the end of the year when we're looking, you know, or like watch the promotion playoff that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, next season I'm going to be watching second division for sure i'm gonna yeah. be tuning in uh, like the past, go ahead i was like, that's probably where i'm gonna be investing more of my time as like a neutral soccer viewer than like yeah. the premier league or things like that i'll probably be watching the second division no that's a great shout and i think um you know in the past i would watch because of union berlin i really like watching their story i like Sandhausen because haji Wright was there all the time but for the most part I, you know and st paul is another team as well but I mean, for the most part i just didn't watch the league but now I, I i'm a fan now i think i'm gonna watch it going forward and i you know it's difficult only for us because we're also trying to, you know, live stream games. You talk about watching games. We were thinking about doing a live stream for the last game and ESPN plus is supposed to have the game. And, you know, fortunately for, at least for me, I had, I had some obligations that kept me up late and I overslept and ESPN botched it. They kind of dropped the ball with, you know, 15 minutes before the game. And all of us who are hoping in the U S in the U S to watch the game got screwed. Yeah. So, I think they switched out for the Verter game like 15, 20 minutes before kickoff because they had said, yeah, they said they were going to show the Shaka game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, fortunately, you know, we didn't have a stream be disappointed with uh, with the advertising. But yeah, um, just one football. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's but next season, presumably, we'll be able to watch, you know, the On games ESPN, to, anytime, so. any game. So watch the games. We'll be back next year, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Bundesliga, hopefully it'll be just as fun as this year. Um, I mean, if we get a title, that'd be amazing. But I, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. But uh, yeah. One more, one more episode to go before the summer. Maybe some some things here and there, but uh, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, Jack, anything else? You're definitely going to predict us to win the league in your preseason predictions next season. I guarantee it because you do that every year when we're in the Bundesliga. Did you predict us to win the league in the second division this year? I did not. I did not. Ah, uh, no. So I think I said the third, third or second spot. I thought. I thought I picked. So I didn't pick to win. So yeah, just whenever you pick us to win the title, we get relegated, and whenever you don't, we win the title. So there you go. That's I will not pick up to pick us to win the title next year. Appreciate it. Time in the near future. So, <laughs> uh, any shout outs? No, that I mean that's all for me. Everybody, just thank you for following us all season. We'll be yeah. back with another episode, like Richard said. But, um, you know, appreciate uh everyone kind of helping grow this very small community. It's been uh dark days, like we said, and it's nice to not kind of uh go through that alone and just get a week after week be like oh my goodness so um it's been great to see the support um and uh it, it's you know there's a lot of u.s viewers and, and north american viewers and everything um and it's been uh great that we kind of have like an internet hub to all connect and support the team we learned during the uh saint Pauli match during the live stream there that we have a lot of world viewers that speak english not just you know in the u.s and canada so you know hey we're, t- we're, we're trying to provide content everyone loves Schalke. A lot of people love Schalke and, you know, not everyone speaks German. So we try to provide that, make that link to help people in there. And so, yeah, I, I, I second that shout out to the chat. I mean, everyone who's come out throughout the year, throughout the year, it's just been amazing for you guys. I mean, for us, thank you. It really helps us along when it's uh, sometimes hard to watch the games, but we do what we can and, and get through the thick and thin of it. But uh, yeah, it's been fun, fun ride. And uh, yeah, uh, one my, my one shout out, I'm going to give a shout out to Muhammad. Muhammad, he is the beer guy that we see at Schalke all the time such a nice guy he looks like he's a nice guy he is a nice guy i reached out to him trying to get an interview for you guys unfortunately my german sucks his english is not as good not that good and so it just didn't work out but he's we did have conversations in german and uh he's a really nice guy so you know he is as advertised so anyway that's my shout out to him and uh 
yeah, let's wrap this one up, Jack. Um, for the not the last time, second to last time, I guess. Uh, how can we support the podcast? Well, one way you could do it, uh, we're gonna upgrade the teespring.com shock America, but you can buy some gear. I mean, hey, just that's Des- one way yeah, to- probably, probably desperately need to upgrade the uh, the we Teespring. Work- check down there. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're gonna work on next year to kind of do more things to help support the podcast. Anything we any money we make is gonna go right back towards the podcast and the creation and stuff like that. You know, we don't we have we have full time jobs, we don't need that kind of stuff, but we definitely want to help grow the podcast, get more people to love Shaka like we all do, right? So um we'll keep stay tuned to that, but you know, teespring.com slash shock America, definitely that's a good place to start. Just saying I, I'm gonna upgrade more stuff in there. I need a hat. I need a hat. So um yeah. Uh you get your where, where can people find you? You told at me J J M M A N G A N on Twitter. Beautiful. I'm at R underscore K H A R M A N on Twitter and anywhere else. And uh yeah, go on our YouTube page, watch our new highlights video, definitely check that out. And uh we'll catch you one one episode to go. We'll let you know when it is, which probably gonna be I don't know, I don't know what day. Next weekend. But until Imminently. then Yeah, exactly. Before the next season. <laughs> For Jack, I'm Richard. Thank you, everybody. Drink tonight. Tschüss.